Amot is one of our guys. Hello everyone, uh, I'm happy to introduce our speaker of today, Professor Amot Zagnon uh, from the Institute of uh, uh, Year Sciences at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Uh, Amot completed his PhD uh, uh, in the University of California, Berkeley, working on the thermal elasticity of the uh, lower mantle. Uh, Amos was awarded by numerous prizes and uh, fellowships, uh, like uh, Landu Students Prize, uh, Helm Woods Association International Fellowships, uh, Rahi Fruent Prize of uh, Israel Geological <coughs> Society, and the uh, areas of interest are Earthquake well Geology and Mechanics, Mid Ocean Ridge and uh, Ophiolite Dynamics, uh, Paleomagnetism. Sea level change and glaciation and the uh, neodetization. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Regina, and all of you for coming. And uh, it's a pleasure to see the well known faces and less familiar ones. And uh, I'm standing here. Actually, as a representative of the, sorry for the, the F5. <coughs> Maybe Alt F5. No. It's too slow for me. Roger that. Maybe in the upper left corner, view and full size. Upper left corner? Yeah, view. Ah. The third one. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, full screen. Screen. Control it. Yeah. 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 Shortcut. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's a bit better. Anyway, uh, these are my, my uh, people that uh, I represent here. Uh, with the partial permission, and Yoni Shaked was the first one who started the uh, work uh, uh, on the earthquake uh, in the Gulf of Aqaba, and we realized very fast that uh, if we want to use corals as uh, uh, markers for changes in elevation, uh, we, uh, we need to also know something about uh, the sea level curve, and we learned that it's not a trivial thing, although it's simpler than one might think, and then uh, there was no file, there's an extra L here, my uh, Parkinson, uh, and uh, afterward uh, Neta started as corn and then bar, and uh, together with Mayani Udai, uh, and uh, now it's not Barnea, and uh, we have uh, these guys always uh, in the support, central support. And so I start with the lessons. This is also the last uh, uh, slide. Uh, this gulf, the Gulf of uh, uh, Aqaba, uh, records uh, addition of melt water. It's, it is as good as recorded as one can, uh, uh, can uh, ask for. There are some limitations, but uh, there are some advantages relatively to uh, other places where you have records of sea level. So, other places you need all kinds of corrections. Here you do need uh, sometimes a tectonic correction, but in certain intervals of uh, time, uh, we think we have a good handle on this correction, which is small, so we, we can have some lessons. And uh, one lesson is uh, that in the last interglacial, uh, there was uh, uh, between 100 and 130,000 years ago, there was a double peak that was not appreciated uh, earlier. If we are correct with our results, uh, you'll see uh, how it looks. Uh, and now, the rise to the present level, uh, we seem to have pulses. These pulses have been noted in, in the past. It's not, uh, it's not a big news. But uh, uh, this work of Esnad Barnea and Elat Paul seems to give us potential to get better handle on, uh, on the pulses. In particular, uh, this pulse uh, 
around uh, 9,000 years ago. Potentially, this pulse, but uh, we didn't uh, uh, look at the, at the data yet, but there is recording of, of this, uh, this period, it seems. And uh, uh, it seems that the pulse that has been around and affected our thinking uh, in the literature of uh, 8.2 uh, thousand years, we don't see evidence of it, and therefore I suspect it's not very important if there was. Now, just uh, for the uh, sake of those of us who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, why, why uh, talk about uh, uh, power sea level? It seems like geologists should already know. So uh, this is uh, from the last decade, and you can add to this, but you can see by the dates, uh, two years apart, uh, you see a very different picture uh, for the last uh, 9,000 years, uh, how the sea level rose to its present position. Uh, and this is supposed to be absolute sea level, not relative. Of course, uh, everybody, I think, appreciates that when you have a local record, uh, it's relative sea level. All the records should agree at present they should be at zero, right, at the geoid. But then in the past, we have the, uh, the change, we have changes through, uh, especially uh, changes of the crust, the, the crust goes up and down, uh, and this complicates uh, how we read the record if you want to know what was the level, the actual level of the sea at uh, a given time. And uh, so uh, one advantage of the Gulf of uh, Aqaba, it's not unique, it's uh, from far from ice caps, but this is one thing to remember. So we don't have the complications due to the loading and the un unloading of the, of the ice, uh, which really make it uh, both complicated and high amplitude variations uh, that you have when you are close to the uh, margins, to the peripheral bulge of uh, the ice sheets. And uh, uh, this is the sea level uh, curve uh, for the Mediterranean. I think it's taken from the work of uh, Doritz Ivan. Uh, in other, other uh, East Mediterranean show, uh, this, uh, this uh, type of uh, behavior. And uh, it's useful for us because uh, both the Mediterranean coast of Israel and the Gulf of Elata are at a similar distance from, they're at a similar latitude and a similar distance from the, the ice. So if you look at the differential, we uh, can learn something uh, local uh, that can give us uh, an answer which is global. I hope to make it more uh, explain it better uh, in the next, uh, in the rest of the talk. But anyway, this is an old uh, picture from, uh, from uh, Yoni's uh, PhD. It's a conceptual uh, idea to remind us what happens uh, when we have deglaciation on ice caps, so it's just a profile. And uh, so uh, the surface of the Earth that is given here, the, the glacial surface uh, is going up where there was a glacier, but then uh, the hydrostatic effects tells us that uh, you have to fill it with mantle flows, uh, and uh, therefore uh, the basins go down. So you have, uh, you have here uh, uh, effects, uh, <coughs> you have this uh, long, a distance coupling uh, across the Earth. Yeah, I, sp I skipped. Uh, so we have the Mediterranean and we have the Gulf of Aqaba. You see the data uh, <coughs> coming. It's not very new. Some of you probably saw it, but I'll also, I promise to show today also some new, uh, new stuff. Uh, everything is explained in, the, in the, this uh, elastic uh, picture of a beam that is being flexed and uh, uh, so the moment is uh, uh, the, the moment of flexure uh, is uh, proportional to the second derivative of the warping of the, the displacement, and you can write your equations in terms of the B harmonic equation. This operation, this operator on the uh, displacement, uh, and uh, this is uh, not really published, but it's been in. in uh, in the, the library for so many years, I'm not going to repeat it. I presented it in several occasions it's since uh, uh, Yoni Shaked's uh, uh, PhD. It turns out we, I, I liked it very much when we developed it. It's a simple model. 
and that one can apply locally, especially when you have to compare two places like Gulf of Aqaba and the, and the Mediterranean that behave so differently, as you saw in the curves. Uh, but uh, we find it very difficult to, uh, to publish due to what uh, uh, I learned recently uh, is called dictatorship of, uh, of uh, reviewers and especially of, of uh, uh, editors, excuse me. So, uh, but, but that's okay. Uh, the, the idea is uh, really uh, to take into account this loading uh, of water. Uh, there's, there's like a slab of water uh, loaded uh, uh, offshore, uh, very small for the Gulf of Aqaba, very big for the Mediterranean. So these are two extreme. Of course, for the for the ocean, it's huge. Uh, for an ocean island, it's uh, it's uh, it's maximal. Uh, and uh, many of the curves come from ocean islands, so there's a big difference in the behavior because if your reef is attached to the, the shoreline, to the uh, continent, then uh, it's not just going up and down like the, like the uh, bottom of uh, the sea, but it's, uh, it has to flex the lithosphere depending on this addition of slab of water and this wedge. Uh, so one can uh, take the solution uh, for, uh, for a line load, uh, use it as a Green's function for, for this equation, a well-known solution, and simply integrate it and get expressions uh, for uh, the displacement as a function of the, the change in elevation of the sea and the shelf width. And this is these are just profiles uh, <coughs> of uh, loading uh, when you have a slab, so you have a, 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 a cliff and you load 100 meters or so of a slab of water just with a, with a straight profile, a zero shelf length, and you get here this picture, this bulging, nothing new about this. Uh, and then you can also introduce the... Uh, do we have a point? Yes. You can introduce the... What we uh, introduce here, which is kind of new, is the effect of the shelf that, thank you, has been noted in the... Uh, has been noted the, shelf, the wide shelf effect. Uh, people who do the global models discover that in wide, wide shelves, the, the models do not work, so they have some fudge uh, uh, addition. Uh, so here we uh, have an exact solution, uh, or at least analytical uh, solution that is exact under some, uh, uh, some assumptions, uh, to show how uh, this flexure uh, happens uh, and its sensitivity to the width of the shelf that you see here, where the width, width of the shelf is given in terms of this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, coefficient that measures the elasticity, the response of, of the plate. The alpha is just this uh, <coughs> this decay time, if you want, of, of this uh, exponential function. This decay length, sorry. So, uh, uh, and it's related very much to the el elastic thickness of the of the lithosphere. Uh, and uh, here we we this is just to show you that uh, the Gulf of uh, Aqaba with a very thin basin, with a very narrow basin, changes very much, uh, the, it changes very little. Uh, the effect of the loading of it is very small, uh, as opposed to a wide, uh, if, if you have a wide shelf, then you get something on the order of 20 meters for the last deglaciation. Uh, here you get something on the order of a uh, couple meters. So it's something that uh, uh, gets lost uh, in the as, as you compare to other uncertainties. Uh, and uh, I, I will want to skip all this just to point out that uh, again by comparing the uh, behavior uh, in the Gulf of Aqaba versus the Mediterranean, looking on the differential we can uh, explain it very well and get to the conclusion that the Gulf of Aqaba, barring tectonic uh, effects, if our points didn't move tectonically, they give a very good uh, uh, measure of the change, the eustatic change if you want, or the melting of the, of the polar ice uh, to the oceans.
And uh, now we go to, uh, we switch, this was Yoni Shaket's thesis long ago, and now we go to a more recent uh, thesis by uh, Neta, who's now uh, starting her PhD, has started her PhD uh, in Yale. And uh, she uh, looked on the reefs uh, of Aqaba, uplifted reefs, uh, uplifted reef uh, terraces that has been uh, noted uh, in the past but not studied in great detail. And she, together with uh, Marianne Yehudai, uh, uh, worked there in the field and, and uh, brought back samples and, and uh, Marianne has, uh, uh, has dated them. So I'll give you some of the results. This is just a, a quick, uh, this is from her. She's very good at drawing, so I, I couldn't resist using her uh, sketch, although this is from a lot. Uh, but it gives us a reminder in this, in this department, probably can skip it. And uh, this is her result, I'll come, sorry. This is the backdrop for her result. This is what was, was uh, uh, given in the literature, or what is given, this variability, variable uh, 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 levels, if you want. So there's some uncertainty, but uh, most uh, models agree that around the one th uh, 35, 6 uh, uh, thousand years ago, there was a, a lake level rise to something like minus 20, then there was a drop, and then it goes up uh, at 122, and it uh, reaches uh, uh, above the present sea level a few meters. Uh, not all models agree, some, mod some uh, people even say that all this doesn't exist. And uh, so this was the main question uh, to be addressed by the research of these two uh, uh, students. One of them was doing the field work and uh, looking on, on the geology, and one was doing the, uh, the dating, uh, which turned out to be uh, very demanding because uh, almost all the powers you find there are replaced, so they are originally, uh, the organism makes them in one phase of uh, calcium carbonate, namely aragonite, and at one point uh, they uh, have been replaced to calcite, which means that all the clocks were reset. I say all the clocks, but this is not entirely true. Uh, it is uh, all the commonly used clocks. And uh, I was uh, uh, with Yoni Shaked and uh, was uh, was Lazar and uh, Moti Stein, we were looking on these things and scratching our heads. How should we find aragonite corals here? Germans were uh, able to find uh, a single coral there and could uh, date it, but uh, it's a problem. There was great uh, uh, effect of, uh, of uh, uh, interaction between groundwater and, uh, and uh, the corals that gave this calcitization and uh, I think it was me who offered the uh, Boaz, whom I know is, uh, is very capable, why don't you develop a method to date the timing of the opening? So let's suppose that the calcite was formed at a given time and at that time it's very likely you were on the sea level as well because the, the corals are going up, you're exposed to, uh, to fresh water that are in the ground, uh, in the ground uh, water uh, lens, and so you'll get uh, the date that they go out. He even did better. He got a way to get the two dates, both the date of calcitization and the date of uh, creation of aragonite. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, invite him for a talk. I'm sure it's going to be a good talk. I'm not going to go into this dating at all, and I don't understand uh, this isotope work. Although I like to, but uh, here you have the sites, uh, some sites of, of uh, coral reefs. Uh, so we have the Akaba reefs that are mostly calcite. We have the uh, Holocene reefs near a lot that uh, touched upon. And then in Sinai, also you have a big problem of calcitization of the uplifted reef. Although Wiltzman, who worked here, was able to find, and as well as other researchers who worked here, they were able to find uh, also some aragonite samples. Uh, I also put the faults here uh, from a, a recent uh, uh, 10 years old paper uh, because uh, uh, they will come uh, uh, handy when we do interpretation. These faults are from uh, the work of Erhard and company. Uh, okay, so uh, if this is the course of Aqaba, 
Then there are these three uh, sites, and uh, I'll start with this uh, central site, uh, the Bedouin village. Uh, we used to take our uh, hotel in the Bedouin uh, camp, so uh, uh, initially we called it the hotel site, but uh, they're not to be not a very good hotel because you have hotels all over uh, the coast. Uh, anyway, what you see here is a map of the various terraces with their exposure. As you see, the map is quite detailed. And you have uh, several terraces uh, by the colors. Not all of them are uh, in uh, this particular stretch, but uh, sufficient. Uh, the R0, the R2, and uh, the R3. Here you see a profile, uh, and uh, you already have the dates for them uh, right here. And uh, I'm not sure that I'll show you all the sites. This was just an example of how, uh, how uh, one of these uh, uh, sites uh, looks. Uh, this is how these corals, these corals are exposed uh, very well. I don't know if you can make coral heads in this uh, picture. Uh, probably not, but this is an issue of, of the grain. Uh, by the eye from this distance, you are even able to see some of these guys. Uh, that uh, Neta had drawn for us here, and you see that they sit on this uh, on this uh, 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 substrate uh, where uh, today, uh, yeah. Uh, for example, one thing uh, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, the bioplastic uh, layer, and you see here fossil, uh, basically sand dollars. These uh, sea urchins. And that come from a uh, depth of, uh, of uh, 60 meters or so. And you might ask what they are doing here, but th this is a story for another talk. Uh, this is how the, the uh, reef, uh, the R0 looks. Uh, so this is just uh, uh, almost just a little bit above uh, the high tide <coughs> level. And that's where we did find Aragonite uh, corals. Uh, the the classification is not an issue. Uh, here we have another uh, another uh, site to the south, the, the marine, uh, uh, sorry, to the north, the marine science station, if, if you know it, this is where they have their counterpart of the IUI, the university uh, station. Uh, and uh, here as well, you see several of these uh, reefs uh, or remnants of, of reefs. I think I went back. Mistake. Uh, okay, so here is another profile uh, uh, just south of the marine science station. We even get this uh, reef, which is R4, but we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, date it, so we don't know. There's some uh, room for additional research there, perhaps. Uh, and here is uh, just a look. Okay, now uh, we have to play a game here of uh, some assumption of uh, uh, uplift. Yeah, we were looking for, for some uh, uplift rate that uh, will tie together uh, all this, uh, all this uh, data for uh, high stand. Uh, and uh, we uh, got uh, 0 0.11, uh, it's a very low uh, low uh, uplift rate. It's a really uh, especially stable uh, coast, coral beach uh, uh, coast. Normally, other places that people have worked uh, on the uh, on the sites that uh, uh, do expose uh, the last interglacial, the material is much higher. Uh, so here the, the rate is very low, and it has some advantage in terms of the resolution. Uh, for what uh, we are seeking, and uh, our errors are enormous. Part of the problem is this classification. It's a it's a nice method, but it's it's a, it's giving uh, enormous errors. But still, I think that we can make here a good story. For one thing, we are happy that uh, these two reefs that from the field we could say uh, the field relations suggest that this postdate this. Uh, R2 postdates uh, R3, 
Uh, and also the error bars are not, uh, I mean, their, their uh, uncertainties are not overlapping. Uh, and then uh, we have here uh, RIF1, uh, which overlaps, but still it gives us an idea of how uh, the curve uh, might look. And uh, if we put on it the, uh, the models from the literature, we learned that, yes, indeed, it seems like there was a high stand at around uh, 138. But from our data, we cannot tell uh, when it did happen. Uh, but uh, if we agree with this appearance, it's probably somewhere here. And, uh, and uh, then uh, there was apparently some uh, dropping down. So it went all the way up, very similar to the, to the maximum here went down and up. So this is like the outcome uh, at present. Uh, this is uh, waiting for being sent out for publication any day. Uh, now, most of the work we did was uh, for the Holocene. There was the work of uh, uh, Noah Weil, some of you remember, from 2008. And there's this thesis that is in the making, and it's being really getting there. Uh, by Osnat Barnea. Uh, again, look at some of the literature. This is a paper from 93. Uh, and you see how uh, reconstruction based on different uh, uh, parts of the world uh, give very different uh, uh, curves. Of course, some of them are, uh, some of it has to do with the corrections, but there's a big uncertainty in the corrections, uh, especially the, the uh, hydroisostatic correction that we think that for the Gulf of Elat uh, is not important. And here we put all the data that uh, Noah Weil, I'll, I'll show you where the data comes from, but just as a motivation. Uh, so you see that it, it's actually telling us it's very consistent with Western Australia. Now this is something that is uh, very uh, uh, encouraging for us because uh, uh, you remember I told you that uh, we like to have a very narrow uh, C. But in fact, our equations also suggest our solution that if you have a very wide C, much wider than alpha, say four or five times alpha, uh, the flexural length, then uh, you also get the same uh, uh, result, meaning that uh, the, uh, the, uh, you, you basically don't have to flex Sphere, okay, because it's so wide, so you incrementally increase the uh, the, uh, the C level, but you don't have to flex because it's a very slow process of uh, of uh, inundation, and uh, and therefore you get uh, the results are, are approaching the west the 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 very wide shelf is approaching the results of uh, of no shelf of cliff, and uh, and we really get a very similar. Behavior here, Papua New Guinea is a very different story. There you have a large tectonic effect that you have to take into account because Papua New Guinea is going up at a, at a very large rate with huge earthquakes, subduction earthquakes. Barbados is a, an accretionary prism, and uh, it's a wonderful uh, uh, work to, to do this kind of research. We visited there actually. Uh, but uh, there, the, the correction, the hydroastrostatic correction, uh, is uh, has to be taken into account. And uh, the thing is that there is a, a time lag of response of the mantle, uh, of the mantle flow. The mantle flow takes a few thousand years for the adjustment, so you don't have a direct uh, uh, effect of, uh, of you don't want to read your effect in terms of uh, how much water was poured into the oceans. So back to the to the uh, picture of the Gulf of Elat and our mantra uh, that we like to have a narrow uh, seaway. And uh, this is already from Yoni Shaked. He put together the Aqaba terraces, work by Alifai and Sharif, and Sinai terraces of Biltzman. Uh, and uh, we see this quite similar behavior and this Orosin reef that uh, we find around the entire uh, Gulf, which seems to indicate uh, a high stand at about six, five thousand years. So there was a very 
uh, like something on the of one two meter of of uh, level drop since the, the last uh, since the, the early Holocene. Uh, so when Noah uh, started to work, this this were the data, and uh, and then uh, she added uh, most of the data come from here. But she did a very thorough work. She mapped this uh, terrace that is exposed, it's still exposed. They're doing development there. But if, if you get there, uh, you you should uh, use the opportunity. I'm very sorry. The work is here. You should get the, the opportunity to look at uh, th this is the uh, glass bottom uh, embayment, the, the where you where you embankment. So uh, uh, take a look at, uh, at, uh, at this this terrace. If you have it in the past, it's really. Uh, it's really teaching. And these are all data uh, either from uh, Shaked, uh, Yoni Shaked, Friedman from 1965, one of the first works of uh, worldwide of, of uh, uh, using radiocarbon <coughs> for, for reef and showing that uh, reefs were elevated. Mustafa <coughs> et al. from 2000. But this, uh, the, the location is very poor here because it was found in a trench, uh, uh, in a pile of a, of a trench, so we don't know exactly what the elevation was. Uh, but you see that Yoni Shaked has collected a nice distribution uh, of uh, dates. <coughs> and then, uh, what Noah did, she wanted to get uh, from a single site as many dates as she can. And uh, so this is Toyam, and the, the reef is right here. You can see it from the road. Uh, and uh, she like a, a good geologist, she mapped it. So she created this uh, this orthogonal net. You don't see it from the panorama, uh, but uh, she created this uh, this net and she she sampled by by drilling from a number of places. And uh, she drawn these uh, uh, these cross sections, which were a big surprise because they tell us that the reef is actually a very thin veneer. This is one meter this cross-section, so we have a vertical exaggeration, these are five meters, but the reef is a few tens of centimeters at most thick, which uh, uh, we didn't realize it uh, when she began. Uh, these are just uh, photos of, uh, uh, of the different types of, of uh, beach rock and the uh, corals wood, uh, etc. This is a thin section just showing you good preservation of, uh, of uh, the uh, fauna remains, and uh, she was very serious. She looked into the uh, families of of uh, uh, corals uh, and tried to. So she looked on, on species level in present day reef and mapped it in very detail. But this I'm not going to go into. And then she looked on the paleo reef and uh, looked at families, and uh, everything indicates that we are at a lagoon here, OK? So right now, the sea is quite open in this direction, but it seems like it was a lagoon. And the, the uh, reef uh, face, the, the reef uh, table extended a few hundred meters into the sea, and it fell down in an earthquake that we described uh, uh, sev several times. Now, I published it in uh, two papers. Uh, but this is not the issue of today. Uh, so uh, now this was to Yam, and here are additional, yeah, you see that, but we're going in the right direction. Okay, so uh, again, these are the data uh, of, of uh, Noah uh, on, uh, on this curve, and uh, yeah, we seem to sit here, but there's a, a, a bit of a difference between Western Australia. We arrived at this high state a bit earlier, OK, but this paper is quite old, and I think that today everything converges to 7,000 years ago, the reaching the maximum. If we put uh, the data on a curve that was uh, computed uh, for the Red Sea uh, from uh, oxygen isotopes in uh, drill holes uh, in the pelagic fascias of the, the Red Sea, uh, using a model of uh, uh, dilution or concentration of, of the heavy isotope by uh, by evaporation. So uh, O18 uh, is, is uh, concentrated by evaporation because it doesn't go to the as much to the to the vapor. Uh, and uh, 
he got uh, this guy, Sidar, and his company, they got uh, this curve. You see, the errors are huge, so everything can fit, but this paper actually is talking about oscillations. You see these oscillations that they see here in the data in the thin line, and the thick line is some filtering. We don't see any evidence of this oscillation. In fact, if there was such oscillation on an amplitude of uh, two meters or more that they report, that they expect here, we don't expect to get this stable forming, this nice stable forming, and nothing on shore today. Uh, we don't see anything uh, on, on shore except this terrace that we see uh, near Turiam and everywhere else that we just dig a little bit, we, we might come across it. So this terrace, similar terrace was recognized by Yoni in some other places, uh, but uh, at the same height and uh, we don't see anything higher. So we think that uh, there's something in this model, the Delta OIT model that needs to be revised and actually Chesi Gildor and Eli Bitton, Eli Bitton in his PhD with Chesi Gildor has looked into a more sophisticated uh, way to, to uh, model this uh, oxygen data, but I don't think that uh, they looked yet at oscillations. They just look on the, on the total signal. Uh, so this, this is just more of that fun of the field work. And now, I'm uh, moving on to the uh, thesis of Usnat Balnea. Uh, one day, Yoni calls me. Yoni has been a great contact. He is working in a lot in the, uh, in the monitoring uh, program of uh, the Ministry of, uh, of uh, Environment. And he tells me that there's a drilling going out here in the sea, because uh, they are planning some extension of the port. So we went there, we visited there, Yoni got also on the rig, and we talked to the, to the drillers, and uh, we got contact with the, with the company that was processing them, and I got access to, uh, actually, to the cores. So uh, you see here a map of, of uh, some of the cores that are separated, something like 50 meters, and there's a, another array here that you see here in greater detail. And uh, these are actually quite good cores. They are collected for a uh, purpose of uh, geotechnical uh, uh, understanding and planning, but uh, still uh, when the cores come, they come uh, in nice uh, cores, uh, six centimeters uh, diameter or so. And uh, I even uh, got from them some fun for, for dating, and we did radiocarbon dating, and in parallel we did uh, uranium thorium dating, uh, actually, this was done by, uh, by Neta uh, Paul Cohen, that I mentioned the name earlier, uh, but they did it. she did it as a job. She learned how to do it, and she did it. Uh, and uh, it turns out that the radiocarbon ages for this kind of material are much better. Uh, although it's aragonite in, uh, for both of them, this is important, but when we look on the stratigraphic order, the radiocarbon is, is uh, doing a better job, and it's probably due to the fact that we are so close here to uh, the, the crystalline basement and the tributaries that come and uh, introduce uh, thorium into the, the trital thorium into the, the coral structure that we can't get rid of. Uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, so now SNAT has uh, looked uh, on this. Uh, uh, on the on the course and uh, looked uh, drawn uh, several sections, proper directions. Excuse me for the Hebrew. Those of you who cannot read, but basically uh, we have here the depth. Uh, this is eight meter here. You can read in English even, and you have this lens of uh, that, that is corals uh, on top of it water, and uh, uh, you have uh, underneath it. Uh, continental stuff, conglomerates, sands, everything. And sometimes on top of the corals you also have sand. We are not sure, uh, not all of them are, are natural because we are in the port, so they have been dredging, they have been moving around of, of uh, material, so we don't deal with them much. And you see that the corals actually uh, reach uh, quite deep, so they might be very interesting for, for uh, uh, geoscientific uh, research. Uh, but uh, we, don't, we did not do much with them so far. I'm, I'm 
Now stepping back uh, to the literature, to this classical paper by Fairbex from 89, uh, talking about the melt pulses. Uh, and in particular, this melt pulse, 1B, uh, this is based on the Barbados uh, uh, coral reef. He, did, he drilled there uh, deep drills, uh, like this drills, and he looked at the rate of accumulation of corals, and he saw that there, is a, there are two jumps, significant that jumps that he explained in terms of melt pulse. Uh, so you'll see that this jump here actually starts about 10 or before 10,000 and reach a peak at 9. Uh, we will have a similar uh, indication of a similar jump a, li a little later. And uh, uh, I think it might be uh, the similar, the same phenomena. So here what you have, these dots are uh, the radiocarbon dates. Most of them are by beta counting because we had large samplers and, and a small uh, budget. And uh, uh, here OSNAT connects a line. So this is that, I forget to say, of course. Uh, connects these lines, colored line, for particular uh, individual uh, drill holes. So these are just kind of trend lines for each drill hole. This drill hole, uh, K2, uh, you see is standing out for a good reason. If, if you uh, uh, ask at the end, I'll, uh, I'll uh, spend uh, another slide on it. But uh, the thing is that they all seem to form this array with very similar rate of, of uh, accretion uh, of, uh, of reef. And uh, another thing to point, uh, these points in this uh, ellipse here uh, are just the extrapolation of these lines to where you have the first appearance of marine uh, marine uh, material. So it hasn't been dated yet, but I think it's already interesting and uh, it has a consequence because note that when you look at this compilation uh, from uh, a decade ago by Kamuan and company, where they uh, put uh, from several uh, spots around the world, they put this scale for the late Holocene, Actually, it's for the entire Holocene, but I, I cut here the, the last uh, 10,000 years, uh, so mid to late Holocene. Uh, you see that there's a, a gap in data because uh, apparently because of this melt pass, uh, on this depth interval, there, there's not much material. <coughs> and uh, we do have this material, and we intend to debate it. It will just take a bit of time. But uh, I think it will tell us about the uh, structure of this particular uh, ascent. Is it a jump like this? Or yeah, if, if the dates, these dates are going to fall right here, we are going to see here quite a dramatic jump. Uh, it, uh, something on the order of uh, above 8.5, 8.5 and, and uh, 9 thousand years, or maybe it's going to start from here, so it needs to be, it remains to be seen. Yes, yeah, and uh, here you have the Noah Vile data, uh, so I think also this curve has to be, uh, has to be now adjusted uh, as, a, as a eustatic curve, it has to probably reach uh, the zero earlier, around 7,000. Uh, yeah, another point that uh, I think one of my next uh, slides is going to show interpretation of this in terms of jumps. So I want to point out that you already can see it here. And people like jumps because uh, when you start melting, you start all these feedbacks and uh, this is why you have pulses. You have pulses, uh, you've seen that people talk a lot about oscillations, not always <coughs> justified. So I'm just pointing out that the potential is here. Now, you know that in our dates, we don't have anything above eight meters. But this, this is just a, a coincidence. Uh, and uh, I, the, we have uh, material from this uh, depth, and I expect to get uh, useful ages from them and to answer where do you have the jumps. For example, you have this paper from 95, from the Great Barrier Reef, uh, and I'm putting here uh, this curve, actually, the, they have a, not a curve, but a, a zone. And this is just the, the, uh, the maximum of, of the envelope. 
this is the, the top of the envelope. I don't put the rest because the rest doesn't agree at all with, with the later data and the, the later models, so it's a bit out of date. But you see this structure with, uh, with uh, actually, uh, it's not, it's a quite a radical interpretation that around the 8,000, uh, you had this jump here, 8.2, and uh, we, we don't see anything like this in our data. Everything is so uniform that I suspect that it didn't happen. I have to look into detail, in, in detail and to, to understand where it comes from. Uh, which I haven't done yet, but uh, I just want to point out this discrepancy between uh, this model that was never popular, but it was there by serious people, uh, and uh, our uh, new data. Also, you can see in this model, uh, in their model, uh, this uh, non-uniform behavior here, where we will be able uh, to say more in the, in the future. Yeah, so we like to put uh, our uh, Medwater pass somewhere here, but we don't know exactly where it comes from. Uh, there is a, paper, a recent paper from 2015 from Svalbard, a lake in Svalbard. And from that uh, uh, lake record, these guys are, uh, are uh, inferring a med pass right here, right where we would like to put it. So uh, talking about teleconnections, uh, perhaps we have it. Now, I promised you this paper by uh, Bill and Company talking about these steps, okay? The steps here are an in interpretation, right? You see that the data points, if you don't put the gray uh, rectangles on them, maybe you don't see steps. But uh, here, perhaps, you do need a step. A step. So if you like steps, then, uh, then uh, uh, you believe it. And uh, just to make it easy for you, I put these blue uh, rectangles uh, and uh, again something that the material is available uh, and uh, we should be able to answer it with the advantages of the Gulf of Elat. So here I just summarize again, I'll go over the, the headlines, the, the bullets and the, I hope that now we can get more. So the Gulf records the addition of meltwater uh, when I say heating, there's also the thermal expansion effect. Uh, but uh, so uh, the main, the main uh, effect is the, the melting effect of the ice. And uh, so now I think you realize why we claim that the Gulf is, is a good recorder due to its uh, negligible isostatic effect. Uh, in the last, in the glacial, we have this double peak with similar height peaks. That in the earlier peak of uh, uh, 138 or so, exceeding the present day uh, level. Uh, and the, the last rise to the, to the present level comes in pulses. So at least pulse, one, one pulse, pulse, one pulse uh, is uh, quite, uh, 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 maybe not obvious, but uh, is called for in our data. And uh, we have potential to address the other pulses that have been uh, uh, advocated in the literature. And we seem to have negative evidence for this particular pulse, very interesting pulse, uh, suggested for 8.2. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rod, for your talk. Uh, any questions, please? Yes, you see, please. I'm not two features that I didn't see reflecting your data. Only two? Yes. Oh, it's good. But, but well, my knowledge is poor. I'll settle for that. Uh, <laughs> there is a story of the well in Atlit Yam. The well in Atlit Yam encountered fresh water at depths of about 16 meters, and it's dated to 8,000, between 8,000 and 7,500 5, 7, years, approximately. Then the well became saline. So you need to drop sea level below 16, 17 meters for that time. I think it's a bit deeper than what you show in a lot. Okay, okay. So the, the, second, the second is 
uh, the flooding of the Bosporus. This is highly controversial, but never mind. And our results suggest that it was flooded uh, around 8,000 years, give or take it. Timing is difficult at this period. And uh, the depth of the Bosporus is 30 meters approximately, a bit less. <coughs> So you have two anchors of sea level of 8,000 years at minus 30 and minus 20 approximately. It's also at 700, 7,000, 7.5. How does this match with you finding in the Gulf of Mexico? Uh, okay, for, for the athlete uh, world, I think we, we should uh, have the, a good understanding of the hydrology there. Uh, I don't have to tell you about uh, seepages of uh, fresh water in the sea today. So, uh, uh, and to, to my knowledge, it hasn't been uh, the, uh, the microhydrology there has not been yet fully understood. Uh, so, I, I leave it at that. Uh, not to say that the data is not good or anything, but I, I think th these are very strong data. Uh, what we have here. Uh, from the Gulf, and uh, one point that I didn't uh, mention is that uh, we are on the uh, on the hanging wall of this normal fault. So, if anything, our data is coming from uh, from higher to lower, which even accentuates uh, this point about pulses that I mentioned. Uh, and uh, and we don't have any uplift in this uh, normal fault earthquakes <coughs> because otherwise we would see on onshore we would see more than we see. Uh, so uh, uh, now regarding the phosphorus, I don't know, but uh, one thing that uh, uh, always bothers me about uh, about uh, uh, flooding by sea or by saline water is that again uh, saline water might get there before the, before uh, you cross the actual threshold due to seepage through the the rock. I don't know if it can uh, solve the problem in the in the Black Sea. Uh, it's uh, it's not a trivial thing. The fluxes have to be large enough. I don't know enough about the fluxes, but I promise to uh, do homework, and for the next <coughs> time I'll have a better answer, either that we can match it or not. A question about rates. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico is uh, you're talking about, especially that the 8.2 kilo annual event uh, is, is a very short interval. It, it's, it's dated to some, I don't know, like a couple of dec decades, like 200, 400 years. Okay. So uh, then you say that we cannot see it anyway. No, I'm, 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 I don't know. I, I'm asking because I don't know how fast. I know that the coral reefs grow really fast, but is it something that you, you think you will, you will see? Because again, in, in another slide, you compared between the Delta 18 data and the Pearl Reef. These are different records in terms of their resolution. Right. So I don't know. Can Pearl Reefs really see uh, really uh, really short term events? Maybe not. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You're right that when I say negative, uh, it, it may be a too strong statement. I mean, but what I mean to say is we don't have evidence for that. Mm -hmm. There is evidence from, from a core in the Mediterranean that I'm working on, not, not a uh, sea level um, evidence, but uh, evidence that Fletches. we can feel the, uh, the event here by in difference in grain size, that we see a peak in grain size, meaning colder event, more dust. So, but uh, but the, the, the thing is, will we see it really in, in sea level? Will, will it be uh, sensitive enough to, to, to be recorded by the core groups? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a very good point uh, that uh, this recorder is limited, like all the recorders, yeah. and uh, this may answer also the question when we try to compare to, to uh, the, the Black Sea. Uh, maybe the Black Sea has an advantage, you know. But, but maybe you need to look for, for uh, maybe even uh, not not terrific samples, but maybe the rogue samples of the risk, because if the sea level is going down, you will see an Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we don't see any terrestrial material in these. These are just, it looks like a solid reef through. Yeah, it has those uh, uh, 
permeability, reef permeability, but the, the, the pores are 30 centimeters low. But you don't see any terrestrial material coming, and no evidence for erosion. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it is, uh, you're right, it is not 